Hi, if you've seen our kettle boiling experiment then you'll remember that we had to adapt the bike generator so that we could all pedal. Now that adaptation was a pulse width modulator and Andrew promised to do a video about this ages ago but has been completely rubbish. So you've got me. Now I might not want to use the bike generator to boil a kettle every day but I do want to use it as a training aid and the pulse width modulator is great for this because it means I can connect it to a higher power load and then adjust the device to make it harder or easier to pedal so I can do an intervals workout, a high intensity workout, whatever I feel like on that day. Now when we did the kettle boiling experiment we did it as a team of three with varying levels of fitness and the pulse width modulator meant that we could vary the power needed for all three of us so that we could all contribute towards the heating of the water. So let's have a look at how it works. As you can see, we have a controller, a potentiometer mounted onto this switch box. Using this, we can control the percentage power available to the kettle or the load. And the percentage is displayed on the pulse width modulator display. The reason it says five speed controller on here is because this device is designed for a DC motor, but it works the same as any other pulse width modulator. And I can demonstrate it whilst connected to a battery like this. Now, a pulse width modulator works by switching the circuit between the power source and the load on and off very, very quickly. In this case, at 15 kilohertz, that's 15,000 times a second. And it gets its name because you vary the relative amount of time the circuit is on by modulating the length of each pulse. It's easiest to show you this in a graph. Here we have percentage power on the Y axis and time along the X. The duty cycle refers to the relative amount of time that the circuit is connected, or on duty, if you will. The blue bars represent a connected circuit, or on. So at 50% on duty, the on pulses produced by the device constitute 50% of the total time. And the average over time means that the load draws only 50% of its maximum power. The pulse width modulator switches on and off so fast that you don't notice any flickering or changes in instantaneous power and it doesn't affect the resistive load. So this red line on the graph represents the average power delivered. This graph shows a 33% duty cycle. This graph is a 75% duty cycle. And this one is 100% duty cycle. So this means that power is on all the time. Pulse width modulators produce what's known as a square wave modulation, unlike the sine wave of an electromagnetic signal, hence the shape of these blue bars. In reality, they aren't perfectly square, but let's not worry about that right now as it makes no difference to the principle. Quick word of warning that you do need to be careful when using a pulse width modulator as it may cause some devices to malfunction. It will work with all resistive loads and DC motors such as the fans on our bike generator, but some inductive loads and electronic devices won't respond well. For example, you can use it to vary the brightness of an LED bulb, but not a fluorescent one. I hope you've enjoyed watching today's video and let us know in the comments below about any projects that you're working on. Thanks for watching.